The next composing methods pattern we're going to look at is called split temporary variable. The motivation behind this one is that you have a temporary variable that is assigned to more than once, but not in any kind of loop or aggregation that, that you would expect to assign to more than once. Now, of course, you can assign to a variable as many times as you want. That's one of the things that distinguishes a variable from a constant. But if that assignment changes the meaning of that variable, and that's another story entirely. And as such, one of the indicators that we generally look for to find a, a need for this refactoring is a variable that has a very generic name, something like temp or value or my object. If it's really difficult to find a name that describes the meaning of that variable, then there's a good chance that variable might have two meanings or more over its life. And that would be a case to apply a refactoring. So here, for example, we have this variable called temp, where here it is assigned to the calculation of a perimeter of a rectangle, and here it's assigned the calculation of an area of the rectangle. So clearly, there should be two different variables. So we'll start by calling that perimeter. And before we rename temp to perimeter, we want to take a look at this because these squiggly lines are giving us some useful information here because now we see everywhere that it's used and so while the examples from Martin Fowler's book in Java they would use a, a final keyword here which would tell the compiler that this line is incorrect we don't have that option in C sharp and so we're going to use these red squiggles to help us so now, here where we have this second assignment, this is where we're going to declare our second variable. And so the remaining squiggles tell us where to use those variables. They tell us how far down the scope perimeter was used, after which it became area. And so we'll move perimeter here, and area here, and that's it. Now, some developers might defend the use of their reassigned temporary variables by citing performance. Now, granted, they might be saving a couple of bytes here or there on the stack, but is that really worth having code that's slightly more difficult to read or in a much longer function or a much larger object, code that could be very prone to bugs because you don't really know what that variable is doing or what it's going to become at some point in the future in its scope. And so we're not really talking about massively scaled systems here. We're squeezing the most performance out of every byte counts. And the compiler is usually pretty good at making the code perform fairly well. So in most cases, I would say favor readability over very, very minute performance gains unless you have a really clear reason to go for that performance gain. So let's take a look at a larger example here. This is one where it's not quite so obvious. This is a nice awkward little function that's declaring a lot of different variables and using them for a lot of different calculations here. Now, this function is calculating the distance that an object travels and specifically when it's acted upon by a couple of different forces. We have this primary force, this secondary force, primary time, secondary time, all of these different things. So let's look at these variables. Result is assigned to a couple of times, but this is one of those aggregations where it's supposed to be assigned to a couple of times. First we give it a value here, and then if some other condition is true, then we modify that value. So that's okay. Acceleration, however, this one is assigned to a couple of times, but it doesn't really mean the same thing. Now result is going to be that overall distance. We're giving it a distance here and we're adding a distance here. It's not very clear. We could introduce some explaining variables here, maybe extract some methods but at least result has the same meaning. Acceleration, on the other hand, its meaning changes. 
we have these primary and secondary things. We should have a primary and secondary acceleration as well. So let's do that. We have primary acceleration. But now let's keep those red squiggles around for a little bit. So the second uh, declaration here is going to be secondary acceleration. And now those red squiggles tell us where we should reapply this name. After all, when we were creating this variable, let's say we wanted to extract this into a, a, a method of its own. We would probably call that get secondary acceleration. And so it makes a lot of sense that it would be in a variable called secondary acceleration. And we could extract a lot of methods here. We're not going to right now, but extract method is actually one of the key times where split temporary variable becomes very useful. Because if you have a temporary variable that means multiple things over the lifetime of its scope, then when you try to extract methods out of that scope, a lot of times you'll be passing around and returning this temporary variable. You might even have to pass it into a method as an output parameter because it, that method's returning something else that means a different thing entirely, but that temporary variable still needs to live throughout the scope into that method and then back out again. And that's an indication that that temporary variable isn't really needed. And in fact, what that extracted method needs is its own internal temporary variable. That's it for the split temporary variable pattern. Thanks for watching.